Hello, this video is based on the excellent but sadly slightly out of date uh, getting started with yarn spinner video, which I'll show in the, show in the edit now. It's pretty good, but um, unfortunately it's for a quite old version of yarn spinner. This video is going to be about how to, how basically to move that tutorial, the basic lessons it teaches over to yarn spinner 1.03. Uh, so. Um, you need to have watched um, the other one, or at least watched it until it is no longer up to date. Because um, that's where I'm going to be addressing all the changes and how it works in the new version. So, uh, we're going to be using the same, for the assets, we're going to be using the same dialogue file that was created in that one. Just like copy-paste, pretty much. How's it going? It's going swell. There's a grammar in there. It's good stuff. What you want to do is, um, in that video, he says you can save it as a .json or .text. Um, in my experience, just do a .yarn. That's your, your safest bet right now. Just do it. Export as a .yarn and import as that. Then you should have this, and then there's a little option here with just a flat text file, and uh, that's what you want. The first thing is for the dialog runner. Um, I have this all set up here, so you can maybe switch between this and the other video, see what's different between his setup and mine. Which again isn't perfect, but it'll get you to a better place that's more up to date. So um, for the dialog runner, there's some slight UI changes. The dialog runner script, that is, uh, not the object. So in the dialog runner, there's the object, there's script. There are a few changes, most notably, um, there's a few changes and there's extra functionality, but what's most important is that the source text is now just yarn scripts. It's the same thing. There's nothing changed. You want to just paste that, um, just dot that in there. And also for variable storage, that's, um, I haven't tested it yet, um, because I haven't gotten that far yet, but just do what the old tutorial said, uh, make object, put the script in there and, uh, just plunk that in the variable storage slot. Then for the dialogue UI, that's where, that's the thing. Um, instead of making a new a new dialog UI object, what you want to do is you want to place a dialog UI script within the same dialog runner object as the dialog runner script. So these should be on top of each other. This is important for some reason. It might not be, but like, just just do it. It'll it'll work out. Okay, for the new things, uh, dialog container, I think that's in the old video as well, just it acts as, um, as like holder for all the different, di for all the different objects that you're going to hold. It's like below the canvas and it's above all the other elements. So just plunk that, just plunk that in that slot. And, um, for the option buttons, it's also, nothing's changed. Uh, if we go to the option buttons, it does what um, he eventually says to do in the tutorial, which is to put in the dialog runner script and do select option zero if it's option zero and option one if it's option one. That hasn't changed. Okay, uh, the one thing that has changed about it, however, is that instead of set option, which he says in, and changes it, instead it is select option int. And then, so that's the only thing, but you could have figured that out. The biggest change and the thing that caused me to make this video is the line text. In the in the original Dalek UI script, there's a very handy public uh, public box where you can put in the text element, uh, which is up here, which says welcome lads, which will display the dialogue that they'll be running. Um, so that, that doesn't exist anymore. And, uh, you know, that's good, but there's, here's what you have to do instead, is the answer lies in this long list of, um, long list of commands. So basically how this works is whenever these events are called while Yarn is doing its thing, like when the dialog starts, you can have it do things. So it'll make this stuff like for preventing the player from walking while during dialogue, it's pretty cool. Uh, you can do stuff and these are all generally useful, but what I didn't know is that they're vital for making the system work. Now you have to put things in here, they're not optional. So what you want to do is on line start, when a new line starts, when you go from the beginning, when you go from, which is in this case, let's quickly check. Let's just start. It goes from, hello, how's it going today? As soon as it finishes that question mark, 
this piece of code will run. We'll actually demonstrate real quick that the system actually works. So we'll just start, we have a trigger here which is shown, which is created in the um, original tutorial. In which case it goes, hello, how's it doing today? Um, in this case, line start would start as soon as I click this. This starts as soon as, this starts as soon as I click this. And furthermore, on line finish display, this runs as soon as the question mark is rendered, and that's just done and over with. And then on line update, it happens every single frame that um, that the text is being updated. So in this case, how's it going? It's going swell. Oh, great. Um, so yeah, that's a slight problem, but we can fix that. We can fix that on your thing. For now, that it works is fine. So you might have already seen this is going. Um, just put the text object in to make sure that once you once you click it, it's actually active. It's not disabled like um, like like the other options at this point. Then on line finish displaying, um, you have to you have to put in the dialog runner from here, and then chunk that in there, and then from from that go to dialog UI, and then mark line complete. This will show that once the line is done completing, that it can. Once it's finished putting the question mark on that, then it can start displaying the options, which is what you want. And then on the line update, this is the big part. This is the big, um, big thing. You want to take the text object like you did on the line start, just plonk it in there, and then on text, click text, and then that will that will put the current line that um, the current line that's being displayed, uh, the current letters, everything. It'll display it in the text element that is vital and uh, missing from that video. Okay, sorry that was a bit if that was a bit rambly, but uh, I just finished this a while ago after spending um, not a small part of two days get trying to get it to work. So if this even helps one other person, or even if it doesn't completely help, if that alleviates some of the confusion, then hopefully this helps. Thank you.